Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example is kind of in a nice format. We don't really have to do anything else to it except maybe it's change the inequality sign to an equal sign so we can see how to find the critical point. So let's do that. Let's rewrite the whole thing. But now instead of writing the less than zero equal to zero and we do that in order to find the critical point. So maybe we write two find the critical points. Now to find the critical points we need to look both in the denominator and at the numerator. The denominator you can see that if x equals a negative 2 or x equals a positive 2 that will make the denominator equal to 0. So first we'll take a look at the denominator and from that we can determine that x should not equal 2 because if it is 2 minus 2 will give me 0 here and x cannot equal a negative 2 because that will make this a 0. Either one will make the denominator 0 which means that will be undefined. So these are two critical points. x cannot equal these two values. Now looking at the numerator we can see that if x equals 3 or if x equals negative 1 then the numerator equals 0 and that means those are also critical points. So when x equals 3 or when x equals negative 1 this will make the numerator 0 that means that the fraction will equal 0 and those are therefore also critical points. We're now ready to put those critical points on a number line. So if this is 0, 1, 2, and a negative 4. There we go. Alright, what are all the critical points? Well, 2 and negative 2, so I'll put little circles around those. And notice I'm not going to color them in because those cannot be part of the solution. So 2 and negative 2 cannot be part of any solution. Then we have 3 and negative 1. So put a circle here and a circle at negative 1. Again, I'm not going to fill those in because we have less than 0, not less than or equal to 0. So those endpoints also do not, are not included in the solution. But now notice we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. We have five different regions. Each one of them we're going to have to check to see if that region is part of the solution or not. In other words, will those numbers in that region, when plugged into our original inequality, will that cause the inequality to be satisfied? In other words, will the left side be less than 0? Now, one way to do that is as follows. Let me rewrite the inequality over here so we can take a look at it. So x plus 1 times x minus 3 divided by x plus 2 multiplied times x minus 2 and less than 0. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each one of these binomials, pick a test point for each of the five regions, and then plug in what the sign of each of these binomials will be based upon that value. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to start with region number 1 and I'll pick the test point negative 3. So for region number 1, I'm going to let x equals negative 3. When I do that, I will get the following. If x equals negative 3, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, this will be a negative value. If I plug in x equals negative 3, negative 3 plus negative 3 is a negative 6, that will be a negative value. If I plug in a negative 3 here, negative 3 plus 2, that will give me a negative value. And negative 3 minus 2 will also give me a negative value. So notice I have a negative times a negative divided by a negative times a negative. Four negatives, well, those will cancel out and give me a positive value. So as a whole, the left side is positive and a positive value can never be less than 0. So therefore, it does not satisfy the inequality and so we go no, no part of the solution falls in region number one, so we can cross that one out. All right, let me try a few more so you can get the hang of this, see how this works. So we'll go ahead and erase these now. And now we'll pick another value. How about negative 1.5? So for region number two, we're going to let x equal negative 1.5, right in between negative 1 and negative 2. So negative 1.5 plus 1, this will still be a negative value. So let's plug in, put a negative here. Negative 1.5 minus 3, that's still a negative value. 
negative 1.5 plus 2. Well, that's a positive value because 2 is bigger than negative 1.5. And negative 1.5 minus 2 is a negative value. Now notice, we have three negatives and a positive. When I multiply and divide in such a way that I have three negatives, overall this becomes a negative. And the negative number is smaller than zero. So therefore, we can see that yes, this region satisfies the inequality. And so we can put a little check mark by region number two that satisfies inequality. How about region number three? Here we're going to let x equal a number in region number three, and of course the easy number to pick is x equals zero, so let's pick that. And again, let's find out. Let's erase all the other. If x equals zero, this is a positive value. If x equals zero, that's a negative value. If x is zero, that's a positive value. If x is zero, this is a negative value. Notice we now have two negatives and two positives. Well, two negatives, when I multiply and divide with two negatives, that becomes a positive, and a positive number cannot be less than zero, so therefore region three does not fit our solution. So the answer is no. We don't have a solution with region three. Region three is not included. All right, now let's go for region number four. In region number four, we're going to let x equal, well, notice between two and three, how about 2.5? Okay, if x equals 2.5, and let me get rid of... If x equals 2.5 plus one is 3.5, that's a positive number. Here we have 2.5 minus three is a negative number. 2.5 plus two, that's a positive number. And 2.5 minus two is still a positive number. Three positives and one negative, well, that means I'm going to have a negative number. When I divide and multiply, and one of them is negative, the whole thing will be negative, and the negative number is less than zero, so therefore we pick the number in the region that does satisfy the inequality, so that's a yes. Now we have our, well, let's make a little check mark here. Now we have our final region, region number five. And so for region number five, we're going to let x equals... Uh, let's see, 4. All right. And again, we'll get rid of all our signs. If x equals 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. That's a positive number. 4 minus 3, that's 1. That's a positive number. 4 plus 2, that's 6. That's a positive number. And 4 minus 2 is 2. That's also a positive number. Notice every binomial then will be positive, And therefore, the overall fraction will be positive, And therefore, a positive number cannot be less than 0. So region number 5 is not part of our solution. So again, you can say no. That means that this is also not part of our solution. So the only part of the solution is the region between negative two, negative one, and the region between two and three. So if we're going to write that appropriately, we can write that from negative two to negative one, and notice not inclusive the endpoints, and the region from two to three, and again, not include the endpoints, so we use parentheses, and that will be the two regions together that form the solution set to this particular inequality. If you don't like the symbol right here, we can simply state that it's from negative two to negative one and from two to three, and that way there's never a concern understanding what that symbol actually means. But that's what it means, it's a union, or and means both of those regions together form the total solution, and that is how it's done.